Hello world and welcome back to another immersive engineering tutorial where today we're going to be talking a little bit about the redstone. Redstone and immersive engineering is done a little bit differently and it's going to utilize the wiring mechanics that we have in order to transfer redstone signals a very large distance away. But first we need to know how to actually make this redstone wire. The redstone wire is created with two aluminium wire, one stick and two redstone dust and you'll get four of these per craft. Now, as well as this, you're also going to need some type of connector, which is where the redstone wire connector comes in. This is going to require three electrum nuggets, two terracottas, and one redstone dust. And this is also going to give you four redstone wire connectors. To use these wired connectors is very simple. All you have to do is place them on any wall, ceiling, or floor. And then you have to use a screwdriver in order to right click on them and see what there's actually happening inside. So right now we can see that these are both set to the channel of white. One is input and the other is input. But if we want to turn this light on, we're going to have to change it to output. So simply right click, not shift right click and right click. And we can see that these can actually be put up to all different colors inside of Minecraft, all 16 of them in total. And then this button up here will change it from input to output, as you see there. So we're going to keep this on the white channel, as we see here. We're going to take our redstone wire, right click on our first connector. It's going to start linking and then put it on our second connector, which is now set to output. Now, with a flick of a lever, we can now turn our light on. On. Now, just as you would with any other type of wire, if you take your wire cutters and right click any connector, it will disconnect all wires from your system. So now let's delve a little bit deeper into how the wire connectors work. We can see here that we have got four different connectors. We have one input and three outputs. And we can tell this simply by looking at it with the blue here means it's input and the orange in the center means it's output, just as it would be with any other machine. But here we have a couple of different colors. We've got white to start with going into a white connector, an orange connector and a magenta connector. Now, if I turn this on, we can see that only one light turns on and that is because we're doing this through a white channel as you see here however what we can do is if we change this now to orange we can see the lighting has changed now you've probably guessed even though we're going through the white channel it's still transferring the redstone energy to the orange output so no matter how you actually have your wires configured the wherever your input is is going to go to the same color output and this can be done across multiple strings so if i change this to magenta you can see that the last light is actually turning on moving on now to the redstone probe connector this is going to act more of like a comparator as you would get in vanilla minecraft this is going to require a redstone wire connector, one circuit back plane, two glass panes and one redstone quartz and this is going to give you one redstone probe. Here we've got a redstone probe that has been shift right clicked onto our chest here and now it's going to actually see what is inside this chest. Right now it's currently empty and that means it's not going to output any redstone signal. Now something that's cool about the redstone probe is that if you take your screwdriver you'll be able to see what's inside and if you right click you can see that there are two different channels. There is a sending signal and a receiving signal. The sending signal we are going to change to uh, magenta. As you see here, we have a magenta and we have a white. So if we change this to magenta here and then start filling this up, let's just use a load of redstone wire, keep a little bit on us of course, we can see that over here we now have a redstone power of 9 coming through our magenta. Now if we wanted to change this to white, we simply could obviously change it back to white and now we have a redstone power of 9 and obviously that digresses as further you go down the line. So for now, let's change this back to magenta. And then what we can see here is that we actually have one of our connectors linked to our probe. And then from the probe, we have got it going to another white connector. Using the same technology we know over here with our connectors, the probe does the same thing, allows redstone to pass through. So if you flick this lever, we can see that it's now actually sending a strong signal of 15 to our white. And then on the side over here, we've still got our power of nine as on our magenta signal, it's only going to be sending sorry on our orange. It's only going to be sending our reading from our chest on the line that we have selected. Now, lastly, of course, we have got our receiving signal. Now, unfortunately, I do not know much about the comparators that you have in vanilla Minecraft, but I believe this is going to work similarly. If you get two different power sources, one from, say, a box and one from a receiving signal, then that's obviously going to be the signal that is received through maybe a white connection as we have here. Besides that, there is not enough documented online for me to actually find out how the receiving signal of the probe actually works. 
But now moving on to our last type of connector that we have inside of Immersive Engineering, and that is the Redstone Interface Connector. This is gonna require one Redstone wire connector and four aluminum wire around the side, and it's gonna give you just one interface connector in total. As well as this, we're gonna be using a new item here called the Item Batcher. This is meant to be used with the conveyor belts, and we'll demonstrate how that works shortly. This is gonna require one iron mechanical component, two iron ingots, one Redstone dust, and four treated wood planks on the side and one circuit backplane on the bottom and it's going to give you one item batcher. Now quickly going over the item batcher before we go over the interface if we right click on our batcher we can see an inventory that I have pre-allocated with some items. Inside of here we have got our filters up to nine filters in total and the way the batcher works is that when you supply the batcher with however many filters you have in total you can then output all of that onto the belt at once to say go into machine this is going to stop your machine from maybe backing up or having loads of items just pop out onto your conveyor belt now you can actually switch this to be output mode being single so every time your filter is individually satisfied it's going to just put out one lane but if you want everything to be satisfied before it actually puts out a batch then you keep it on output mode when all filters are satisfied so inside of here, we've obviously got our filters. We're going to ask for three stone, one granite, one dirt, and five diorite. And we've got this on our output mode of everything satisfied. So our buffers have to fill up to have three stone, one granite, one dirt, and five diorite forgot the name there before it actually puts anything out so i filled this up in this configuration just so it filters everything out nicely and we're gonna now put that onto there wrong thing i'm gonna need our extractor belt of course and that's gonna start putting things up as you can see here it's not putting anything out because the buffers haven't been supplied properly but as soon as the dirt's in here and we're now going to wait for our last piece of diorite before it's going to actually output and there we go a whole batch has been put out and we now have exactly what we asked for in our chest but now let's talk a little bit more about the redstone interface itself. So down here we have got our different buffers as you can see and with each of these has the ability of actually sending out an individual signal. So for us we have got white, orange, magenta and light blue as you see here. So as these filters are going to be put together what we can do is either set this on satisfied mode which means every time it's going to output our buffer it's going to actually send a redstone signal to our lamps here but if we have this on all together that means it's not going to output a signal until all of it is going to be inside of here ready to be dispatched and dispatched so for now let's actually take this away and just demonstrate how this works putting this in here first we can see that everything's going in and it's not until it's going to be fully satisfied that it's actually going to start sending out a signal on the white lane There we go, we have our satisfied filter here. So now we're sending out a white signal, as you can see. But what we can do is actually set this. So if I set this to orange here, as you can see, it's satisfied and the others aren't going. So we put this to magenta and we now put this to light blue and all of our lights are now going. So let's take this out and then it's going to start working and pretty soon it's going to actually turn it all off because it's going to run out of stuff as you can see here the last batch is not ready there is not enough dye right in here so the light blue has turned off but the other three are still satisfied so it says that it's ready this is a way of setting up your item matcher to say oh which items are still missing so if you have everything color coded like this you'll have a lamp saying oh we need to have more dye right in this case so if we just put one more dye right in here it's going to say that it's ready but it's already output it so <laughs> it's a bit quick. There we go, we've said that's now satisfied and of course it's now lit up again. Another thing we can use with the interface connector is something called the logic unit. This is another redstone type block that's inside of immersive engineering. This is going to require one circuit backplane, four vacuum tubes and four treated wood planks and this is going to give you one logic circuit, one logic unit sorry. Let's grab one of these and then the next thing we're going to need is actually an engineer's circuit table. This is going to require one engineer's screwdriver, one light engineer engineering block one engineer's crafting table and two treated wood slabs and when you craft this it is going to consume your screwdriver so make sure you have a spare now here i've actually placed down our engineer's circuits and the back of the table actually needs to be powered on this side so at the back i have got there a creative capacitor in order to power this up now looking inside of here i have filled this up with a couple of different things you are going to need to have circuit back planes vacuum tubes and wire copper wire that is 
Now, as you can see, this is going to, in order to create many different things, we can either set individual types to be something, we can make knots, uh, not gates, or gates, and gates, XOR gates, NOR gates, NAND gates, and XNOR gates. Now, when it comes to redstone stuff, I'm not the best when it comes to all these different gates. So today I'm just going to be showing you how to use set and and. And if you're familiar with redstone, of course, you're going to know how all these different gates work. So for an and gate, we're obviously going to need two inputs and an output. So first we need to set what these inputs are. Let's go to set and then we have loads of different colors. We have all 16 different colors. And then we also have these things called register. We have register zero up to register seven, which means we have eight registers in total, but we'll cover registers in a little bit or at the end of this. So for this, we're going to say we have an orange input and this is going to give us an output of register zero. really annoying that you can only go one way so here we have orange is set to register zero so let's take this plate next we're going to set magenta to actually be register two so now we've got two circuits we have orange is going to put out a redstone signal of register zero and we have magenta being an output of register one so now we want our and gates we have our two inputs here being register zero and register one so now let's change this to be register zero and then we want our other to be register one as we see here now since we want that to output redstone signal let's change the output to actually be a color and say light blue so now we have our three different types of things here we have got register zero is orange register one is magenta and then when you have register zero and register one i'll put a signal on light blue so let's now build this we're going to need these different materials here so let's get a lamp as well since we already have everything on our inventory now we want to place down our logic circuit. This always places uh, the back part of it to you. And on the front is where we're going to want to have our interface here. So let's place our interface connector there. And then we want to right click on our logic units. And inside we can have up to 10 different cards. So depending on how complicated you want your redstone signal, your redstone system to be, this is what you place in here. So we obviously want our orange, we want our magenta, and then we want our light blue output. So now we have nothing to do on our interface here, but what we're going to need to have is a couple of redstone connectors. We're going to want an output, of course, and then let's put a lamp to show how this works. So we want our output to be obviously this connector. We want it to be light blue and output. That should power up our lamp here. And then we said that we want orange input and we also want a magenta input. So now let's link all of these up to our probe here. And the probe is essentially going to sorry not the probe the interface is going to read our logic units here to output our signal so we're also going to need one lever of course so let's get some of those so now we have our inputs our and gate set up and our output so if we have magenta nothing happens sorry if we have orange nothing happens if we have magenta nothing happens but if we have both the light now works because it's outputting a signal on light blue obviously if this was a color it wouldn't actually work except from orange because orange is actually transferring through the interface into the connector so let's change this to pink and now it doesn't work obviously if you're familiar with the various other types of gates that you have inside of minecraft you can make a very very compact system using the logic unit but now just as a bonus we have a couple of extra redstone things involved inside of immersive engineering one is the turntable the turntable is made with two iron ingots one treated wood plank one copper core block and two redstone dust and this will give us our turntable now on top of here we can see that this place here is actually where our turning is going to happen now we are going to be using ourselves a furnace here as it has different faces obviously on the sides so we'll be able to show when this rotates this doesn't need power just a red stone signal so when you place actually your turntable down as you can see here it places away from whichever way you're looking so i'm placing this obviously facing that way and if i hold shift then it places towards me so for the way that we have it we need to jump and hold shift and place it towards us it's very very annoying but using a hammer you can actually rotate this block of course so now we're going to place our furnace on top of it as you can see and then you're going to need a screwdriver sorry not a screwdriver you're going to need an engineer's hammer 
in order to actually show how this is rotating so no matter which place you you are rotating it's going to show how the thing's going to be rotated but if you obviously right click on this it's going to spin it but if you hold shift you can actually change how this spins so at the moment this is saying that we're going to turn our face 90 degrees every time we apply a redstone signal so let's get ourselves our lever here and then we flip it as you can see it switched it by one face it doesn't just keep rotating with a constant signal so we have to turn this off and on again it's now on the complete other side but what we can do is obviously hold shift right click and now we've actually changed it to turn 180 degrees clockwise so we right click and then we do it again it's now facing us and obviously we're skipping our middle part here as it's facing 180 and then if we go one more time we actually have rotating counterclockwise at 90 degrees obviously you don't want to flick your lever with the hammer otherwise it does some weird things so we keep changing this and now it's rotating counterclockwise and obviously lastly it goes back to regular clockwise at 90 degrees now on here i have placed loads of these interfaces just as an idea say that we had somehow set something up with our logic unit to be on top of our turntable we could then have our logic unit rotate between different sides depending on how you programmed it and then each time you put in a redstone signal it would obviously rotate it and do the next interface to go off to a different area i don't know why you'd want to use this but i'm sure people can figure something out because people are a lot cleverer than i now the last thing we're going to show off is the redstone breaker this is very similar to a switch breaker as we're going to demonstrate shortly but of course it switches off power on and off using redstone so this is going to require two hv wire connectors two iron ingots one redstone vanilla piece repeater one redstone dust oh sorry four iron ingots now you only get one of these breakers when crafted so here we've got two systems set up we have a powered lamp here which is something we actually haven't showed off either so just as a quick show off it is using three iron plates two glass panes one redstone dust and a vacuum tube and this is very similar to the regular lanterns that you get inside of a mess of engineering but of course you can turn this off and on again now something else we also haven't showed here is the break and switch which is essentially a manual way of turning power off and on inside of a circuit or a system that's going to use copper ingots one lever and two pieces of terracotta so here just to show off the breaker we have got our creative capacitor linked up to a powered lantern so if we now turn this on we can see that the light lantern now works turn it off again and the lantern turns off very very simple also there's a very strange sound when you press it off and on again it's very funny and i rather enjoy it now the redstone breaker works the exact same way except when you apply a redstone signal to it it's going to disconnect our power so we're going to apply a redstone signal and the breaker now shuts off our power to our other pan powered lantern as you see here now the redstone breaker can be placed on the floor on the walls or on the ceiling however you would like as well as that it has different rotations so depending on which way you look it's going to place a different way slightly there we go just like that they can also obviously be placed on side of posts as well and they will actually connect to these like this so if i take that off and actually place it underneath it will recognize and place in a couple of weird different ways but for now guys that is everything when it comes to redstone inside of immersive engineering and now there's just going to be one more episode left for the last remaining things which we have not yet shown off today and then we're going to be on to a brand new mod i've linked to a poll on the community tab down in the description if you would like to vote on what mod we are going to be covering next but if this video helped you out in any way shape or form please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe it would really help me out and ring the bell button to stay notified when these videos go live but if you would like to learn more about the different things that you can do with conveyor belts then click the on screen video now but until next time guys take care